Have you ever wondered how web servers get hacked? It's a question that has puzzled many, even IT students. To unravel this mystery, let's first understand what web servers are. Imagine them as the heart of the internet, pumping out web pages to visitors worldwide. They are the digital librarians, working tirelessly to fetch and serve up the information we seek online. Now, let's delve into the shadowy realm of hacking. In essence, hacking is the practice of exploiting weaknesses in a computer system, often with malicious intent. When a hacker targets a web server, they're not just after the server itself, they're after the treasure trove of information it holds. Think of it as a digital heist, with the hackers as the sophisticated thieves and the web server as the vault. By the end of this video, you will have a basic understanding of how hackers infiltrate web servers. The first step in hacking a web server is reconnaissance. This is where our journey into the world of hacking truly begins. Reconnaissance is not just a random stroll on the internet, it's a meticulously planned expedition into the unknown, with a clear goal in sight. So what does reconnaissance involve? Quite simply, it's all about gathering information. Think of it as a detective piecing together clues to solve a case, but in this case, the clues are bits and pieces of information about the target system. This could be anything from the target's IP addresses to domain details, and information about the network services they're running. The more information you have, the clearer the picture you get of your target. And just like a detective, the hacker uses a variety of tools and techniques to gather this information. This might involve something as simple as a Google search, or something more sophisticated like a network scan. The trick is to be patient and to know where to look. It's not about finding a smoking gun, it's about building a complete profile of the target. Why is this important? Because understanding the target is key to planning an effective attack. Knowing the target's strengths and weaknesses allows the hacker to tailor their attack strategy accordingly. To sum it up, reconnaissance is not just about gathering information, it's about understanding the target. Reconnaissance provides hackers with the necessary information to plan their attack. After reconnaissance comes scanning and enumeration. This phase is a crucial one, where we map the landscape of the target system, identifying any vulnerabilities that can be exploited. Now you might be wondering, how's this done? Well, think of scanning as the process of knocking on every door in a building to see which ones are unlocked. We use tools like NMAP, which stands for Network Mapper. NMAP sends packets to the target system and analyzes the responses to determine details like what services are running, what operating system is being used, and even what type of firewall is in place. On the other hand, enumeration is more like stepping into those unlocked doors to see what's inside. It's about gathering more detailed information about the system, such as usernames, group information, and system banners. Nessus is one such tool that helps with this. It's a vulnerability scanner that can identify potential weak points, like outdated software or incorrect configurations. But remember, these tools are not a magic wand. They require a good understanding of how networks and systems work. Their output is only as good as the person interpreting the results. Keep in mind that ethical hacking is not about causing harm, but about identifying and fixing weaknesses to make a system more secure. Scanning and enumeration are the hacker's roadmap to a successful attack. But in the hands of a responsible user, they can be the roadmap to a more secure system. With the roadmap ready, the hacker is now prepared to gain access. Let's dive right into it. After a hacker has scanned and enumerated a system, they've essentially drawn a map of its vulnerabilities. Now it's time to exploit those weaknesses to gain unauthorized access. To exploit these vulnerabilities, hackers typically use specialized software or scripts. These tools are designed to manipulate or take advantage of the system's security holes. Imagine, if you will, a lockpicker seeking out the faults in a lock mechanism to open a door without the key. In the digital world, the tools of the trade are a bit more complex, but the principle is the same. The most common method of exploitation is through the use of malicious software, also known as malware. This could be a virus, a worm, a Trojan horse, or perhaps a piece of ransomware, each with their own unique ways of gaining entry. Another popular method is through social engineering attacks. This is where the hacker manipulates people into revealing confidential information. This could be done through phishing emails, pretexting, or even baiting. 
But remember, gaining access is not a random act of breaking and entering. It's a calculated move, often the result of careful planning and skillful execution. It's about finding the right key for the right lock, or sometimes making the key yourself. Gaining access is the culmination of the hacker's meticulous planning, and that, my friends, is the art of gaining access to a system. Once inside, the hacker's job isn't over yet. You see, access is one thing, but maintaining it is another ballgame altogether. Hackers often use clever techniques to keep their illicit access alive, even after the initial vulnerability is patched. One such technique involves planting what's known as a back door. This is essentially a secret passage that allows the hacker to bypass regular authentication methods and re-enter the system at will. Now let's imagine for a moment that our hacker is a burglar. Just as a burglar wouldn't want to leave any signs of a break-in, a hacker also wants to cover their tracks. But how exactly do they manage that? Well, one common method is by cleaning logs. In the digital world, logs are like footprints. They record who came, who went, and what they did. By cleaning these logs, hackers effectively erase their digital footprints, making it much harder for anyone to trace their actions back to them. But bear in mind, these techniques are not foolproof. With advanced intrusion detection systems and forensics, it's becoming increasingly difficult for hackers to remain undetected. However, understanding these tactics is crucial for building robust defenses. Maintaining access and covering tracks ensure the hacker's presence remains undetected. But remember, the best defense is a good offense. Stay one step ahead by understanding the hacker's playbook and building stronger, smarter security systems.